so nice to be here. It's so nice to be here. What a, what, a, what a beautiful place this is. And you guys got here with traffic. I got here just 10 minutes ago, too, so I thought you might be late. But you, but here you are with my books. That's so wonderful. Um, how many of you have actually read the whole book? And how many of you have started it? Okay, that's great. So if I, if I read anything from it, I might not read the very first pages. I might read something from the middle. And I am going to save time for you to ask questions. Um, some of you, because you are, are you all sixth grade girls? Yes. yes. Excellent. Um, some of you may happen to have seen or this magazine is called Girls Life, GL. And it's for girls around your age. And for 20 years now, my other job, besides writing fiction, has been to be an advice columnist and to try to help girls your age and girls a little bit older with their problem. Dear Carol, and I love that reaction. I've got a, I've got a, that's what I always, no, really, that's you. But I always like to see that because the girls who actually get this magazine for years and years and they ask, they open their hearts and they ask their questions about their mom or their dad or their crush or their sister or their work or their school or their teacher and I try to give answers. So I've been doing that for 20 years. Um, one thing I want to say about writing is that it doesn't just come out perfect. It, just the way when you write something and then you reread it and you realize, oh, I made a mistake or I know how to spell here and here, H-E-R-E and H-E-A-R, but I got it wrong, but I'll fix it up. Sloppy copy, it's fine at your age, and it's fine at my age to make mistakes and then later clean them up. So even for my magazine uh, column, I always, I always just cross things out, fix it up, make it better, and certainly for a book like Ava and Pip, it goes through so many drafts. And I know you do that for school, too, to make it something better. For instance, I'm going to show you all this multicolored stuff. Um, sometimes people say, how many drafts? Like, they expect me to say three or six. In fact, it's like a zillion. I work on something, and then when I'm just tired of looking at it, I print it out in a brand new color, like maybe yellow or or lighter yellow, or green, you know, and it's the same thing. This is actually the sequel to the book in your hands. This one's called Ava and Taco Cat. Um, isn't that a fun name? And you know, Ava is the same backwards and forwards, A-V-A, and Pip, P-I-P, and their parents, Bob and Anna, mom and dad, and Sis is a palindrome. So those of you who haven't thought about palindromes, you might be thinking, huh, H-U-H, and then wow, W-O-W. -W. And then there are long ones, like if you go to a Chinese restaurant, wonton, not now, it's a palindrome. Or um, do geese, see God, that's a palindrome. So, um, so Taco Cat is a palindrome. <laughs> and, and in the second book, Ava really, 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 really wants a cat. But her mom, as you know, works uh, at, at, is the office manager at a vet. And she's like, I deal with animals all day. We are not getting a cat. But Ava may or may not be able to wear her down. And then there may or may not be able to be lots of problems. I say that because just say I said to you, in the next book, Ava gets a cat, and then she's so happy. You, you would say, well, why am I going to read the book? Books have to have problems. In my Dear Carol advice column, I really want to help girls with their problems. But in my novels, when it's fiction and not nonfiction, I want to create problems. Because if I just give you a really happy story, you're not going to bother reading it. So Ava and Pip have to have troubles. And as you know, those of you who've read the whole book, Pip is really, really shy. I mean, she's just not a little bit shy. Most people your age are a little bit shy. I mean, it's, it's, it's okay to be a little bit shy, but she's sort of shy, painfully shy, doesn't talk shy. And by the end of the book, because most children's books and books for middle, you know, middle grades aren't going to end with tragedy. So at the end, she's going to figure out how to come out of her shell a little bit. But in the beginning, it's, it's really hard for Pip 
And then guess what? It's really hard for Ava too. Because in your family, if you have a brother or sister who's got special needs or big issues or a big ego or whatever's going on, that they're suddenly getting all the parent attention, that's hard for you too. And I wanted to write for the kids who, you know, for this good kid who had a sister who was kind of taking up all her mom's attention. Um, some authors are also artists. I am not. I'm a writer, and that's it. I don't, I don't draw. I think it's really cool that Eric Carle, who wrote um, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, is also an artist, and there are a lot of people who can do both, but, but I can't. So the person who did the cover of my book, her name is Victoria. She lives in Oregon, I think, and, um, and she did a couple of covers. This was one, Ava and Pip, but it doesn't look like your book in your hand, right? The book in your hand is, wait, um, I'm looking for one more thing here, I'm gonna find it. I found it. The book in your hand, instead of having um, Ava and Pip both sitting down, Pip's sitting down, but Ava's sort of upside down, hanging. And I have to say, when I saw this cover, I thought, this is such a cute cover. Because it reminded me of this picture um, of me in a scrapbook when I was a little kid. And I was the third kid, so there weren't so many pictures of me. There were way more of my big brothers. But there was this one of me sort of hanging. <laughs> and then if you turn it upside down, I was like, wait a second. This, this artist kind of caught me. <laughs> um, and as many writers will tell you, we do put ourselves in our books. Sometimes we're not the main character. I wrote a series of books about a girl named Melanie Martin. I don't know if any of you read any of them, but um, this is one called Melanie in Manhattan, and she goes to all five boroughs. And in this book, I kind of put myself in the mom character. I made the mom a middle school art teacher. And I'm not a teacher, and I'm not an art teacher, but I know a lot about art, and I like talking to sixth grade kids, and so I made the mom like that. In this book, I'm a little more like Ava herself. I'm a little bit of a, uh, of the, in this book, fifth grade kid with the older siblings, and always having a diary, and being a little bit of a tomboy, and being a little bit afraid of big books. Do you remember um, the part on page four, uh, six, where she says, here's how I pick books. I look at the front and back covers. I check to see if it's about a regular kid with normal problems, not super scary or supernatural problems. I read the first page so I can hear the voice and how it sounds. I peek at the last page to see how long it is. If there are too many pages, forget it. I put the book back. In short, I like short books. So now I have a confession. When I was your age, I was just beginning to learn to enjoy reading books this size. I mean, I did know how to read, but if I was going to pick a book, I kind of wanted it short. And if no one was looking, I kind of wanted it to be a comic book. I just, I was not an early reader. Um, and then I read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And I know I was in sixth grade when I read it because I moved from one public school to another public school in the middle of the year. I don't even know if they allow that now. I mean, you're supposed to start school in the summer. But, you know, one fine day, for whatever reasons, we just moved from one town to another. And so I started school. And I remember when the, when the teacher said, we have a new kid in class. Her name is Carol Weston, you know, be nice to her. And like everybody swiveled their head and looked. It was like very embarrassing. But I think maybe that helped me remember very vividly what it was like for me to be that age, because I, I remember that day, like hour by hour in the new school. Um, my parents also moved me and my brothers in third grade, also in the middle of the year. So I also remember third grade pretty well. Um, some people will say, and so in sixth grade, I started, I think, in fifth grade and sixth grade, it's almost like I woke up and kind of became a student. Um, I think I was busy, like, playing games and hanging out and, you know, doing cartwheels and whatever before that, reading, reading comic books. Um, and Aesop Fables, which are really, really short and really, really interesting. I mean, they're, they're, you, you get so much out of Aesop Fables, and Ava has a few of them in this book. If you were to say, what was your first book, Carol? Now, hang on. I would say, well, my first book was in fifth grade because it's called The Story of My Life. Isn't this kind of cute? 
And I'll, I'll read you the beginning of the table of contents. Chapter one, crib days. Chapter two, almost two. <laughs> chapter three, the world I lived in. Um, actually, chapter four is, a, or chapter five is a new home, a new school. And then the teacher put the comma in there. <laughs> um, but I'm glad I kept that because it's kind of sweet to have. You don't want to keep all your homework. You don't want to keep every single spelling test or math homework. But if you write something about your grandmother or your pet or yourself or a poem that you like or a poem that your teacher likes, keep it. Just put it, just take pride in your work. I mean, it's always important to take pride in your work and do your best work so you can be proud of it. I'm going to show you a diary from when I was around eight, um, even before that fifth grade masterpiece. I'm going to read you from this. See if you can hear a mistake, because I was not a literary personage at age eight. And I'd buy my lunch at school. The menu was pizza, and it was good. Oh yes, at school we learned to write Z and Y in scripted. So now I've learned every letter in scripted except for the letters B, C, E, F, H, K, L, P, Q, R, S, T. <laughs> and then I wrote, of course I know every letter. <laughs> Although I'm not writing in script, I'm writing in print. But to me it's kind of funny looking back to realize that my childhood diary, I didn't have that much to say. It's not like I was traveling the world which later my character, Melanie Martin, she was like a little world traveler as a kid. But, you know, I was just a kid. So I was writing about what I was learning in school. And I was having fun writing. I, I recommend keeping diaries or journals or writing work, work uh, books. For me, it was great keeping a diary when I was about your age. Because here's the thing, if you like got a great grade in school and you just want to go on and on about it, your diary never says, oh, stop boasting. Or if you're really, really bummed out because something happened, your diary never says, oh, stop whining. There are a lot of kids in this world who have it worse than you. Your diary just takes whatever you want to write. And it doesn't have to be a, a dear diary kind of thing, though it can be. It can just be a spiral notebook or just a journal where you get to just to put your heart in it. You get to say, today was kind of cool. We went into New York City and we heard an author. Or today nothing happened. Or today I have a crush on this guy and he won't look at me. You know, she would look at me. I mean, if you went back at my diaries, I was like, enough of, who is this person? I barely remember. Actually, of course I remember. Everybody remembers who they had a crush on in sixth grade. They tell you they don't remember, they are lying. But, I mean, really, I spent a lot of pages on this person who, I will say, do I know what he even was like? I mean, who was this person? Probably everybody thought he was cute, so I did too. Um, anyway, keep a diary. That's to say, keep a diary. Let's see. My, my very first real life book, not, not, you know, fifth grade book, is called Girl Talk. All the stuff your sister never told you. And it's still available. Um, you can order it or you can get it as an e-book or you can ask your librarian to get a copy. Uh, it's just got, basically I wrote it because when I got married, I married a man who had a sister who I think she was in sixth grade. And who I was 23. And it was so fun for me to suddenly have this little sister. I, who had big brothers, it's me, my big brothers. And so suddenly I had this little sister. And I thought, wow, I want to tell her so many things because I um, was writing for Seventeen Magazine and I had survived middle school and high school and college and adolescence. So I just wanted to tell her everything about you know, friends and, and periods and everything. And so I wrote this whole book. <laughs> um, one of the chapters is called, Is Your Period? A question mark. Okay, I'm just going to segue for a second off the literature thing since it's all girls. I, I talked this morning to the sixth graders at uh, Bank Street uh, uptown, 112th Street, but there was like boys and girls I couldn't talk about, stuff like that. But, you know, let me just say in sixth grade, I, I knew that some of the kids had started, but a lot of them hadn't, and I was a late bloomer and started till I was 15. So I wanna, wanna, what I want to say about this is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you start at 10 or 15. And, and you shouldn't, like, if you have a friend who started really early or a friend who hasn't started yet, you shouldn't treat her like she's immature. No, her body hasn't caught up, but who cares? Everybody's body, you know, every, every girl turns into a woman and it doesn't matter. So don't let it mess up your friendships. Or don't let it worry you. If you haven't started, believe me, you're going to start. If you have started, great, you know, join the club. 
Okay. Anyway, um, Girl Talk got translated into like 12 languages, including Chine Chinese, and, and including, whoops, two kinds of Chinese. One of them is sort of messy, have you noticed? Um, one of them is a book that we op they open from this side. I'm not going to say it's backwards, because they probably think we open our books backwards, but they open it from, from the back. And so, as you can see, Girl Talk is in English. Girl Talk is in English, but the characters are in Chinese, and they go in columns. And then Girl Talk also got translated into, I think this is Cantonese. One of them's Cantonese, and one of them's Mandarin. And instead of columns, this is, uh, you know, horizontal. So it's sort of fun. One of the fun things, I think my favorite things, among my favorite things about being a writer are talking to kids and then when books get translated. Um, as it happens, I really liked languages. When I was in sixth grade, I hadn't had the privilege of starting to study a language yet. But in seventh grade, we started taking Spanish. No, sorry, I started taking French. And I thought that was really fun. And then in college, I started taking Spanish and I thought that was really fun. So then I majored in French and Spanish comparative literature, which basically meant I just got to read a lot of novels. And instead of reading them in English, I read them in French and Spanish. Hay alguien aquí que habla español? Mucha gente habla español. un poquito. Well, that is wonderful. You are so lucky. If you speak English and Spanish in sixth grade, you're like off and running. You're already bilingual. And maybe some of you speak Spanish at home, but you don't really know all the grammar rules, so you're going to take some classes and, and get, you know, make it so that you can actually write excellent Spanish and, and just the way you're learning to write excellent English. I'm just telling you, it's such an advantage. Il y a quelqu'un ici qui parle français, peut-être? Personne? Il y en a, yeah. So a few of you speak French too, and again, it's just wonderful. And that's it. I'm all done showing off. But I, uh, but I really enjoy. I'm really glad that even though at your age I would only be able to say English and that's it, I'm really glad I put in the time to learn other languages because it's just it's fun. It makes your life a little more fun. And then if I meet somebody. I, and they only speak, they don't speak English, I maybe can make friends with them anyway. Um, what else should I tell you guys? Should we, should we already open it up to questions? Yeah. Okay, you. Do you have one? Yeah. Um, what inspired you to write this novel? What inspired me to write this novel? Well, I think because I am the Dear Carol advice columnist of Girls Life magazine, I know that while a lot of girls have a lot of gigantic problems, some girls have problems that might be smaller, but that feel gigantic to them. For instance, if your mom isn't paying enough attention to you, and you're a good kid, you know, you wanna, you wanna fix that. Or, and in Pip's case, her gigantic problem is that she was too shy. And in, in my life as a kid, I think I wanted, my mom was very busy, and I think I did want her to pay attention to me a little more, so that was an inspiration. But I also have met kids who are, who are, I think it's fine to be shy again, but to be too shy is, is a disability. So I wanted to be able to help those kids um, and just, again, a little bit of a segue, but if, you're, if you happen to feel like, I wish I weren't as shy as I am, which so many sixth graders feel, number one, so many people are shy. Number two, <coughs> say hi. It is a two-letter word. It's not that hard. Say mm -hmm. hi. Number three, you give a compliment. If you say to me, I like your earrings, or I say to you, I like your bow, you know, it's just, or like your headband, or just, you know, whatever the compliment, the person that you compliment is not going to sneer at you, they're going to say thank you, and probably say, I got it at, you know, Target, or they're going to say, or my mom gave it, got it in Jamaica, or they're going to say something to you, and then suddenly you have a conversation going, so give people compliments, it's really good advice, and uh, also it gets easier, if you're shy now, believe me. In 10th grade, someone might be saying, enough talking, stop, be a little shyer. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, who plays Ava and Pip in your real life? Wait, who plays Ava in real life? Who plays Ava, almost like if it were a movie, who plays them? No, like in your real life, like who inspired? Yeah, yeah, who, okay. Um, I think I was, I was kind of Ava. My big brother, Mark, is not at all like Pip. He's a guy, he's not shy, but, but there was a little bit of, um, you know, he was getting more attention, that kind of thing. And and I guess that would be my answer. So I do try to, because I was a kid with the diary, I do try to let myself remember how it felt to be your age and, and put that into a diary. Yes? How did you come up with the names? 
how do they come up with the names? Okay, I gotta, I'll be honest with that one. First of all, the palindromes and the wordplay, I liked that. But I wanted a book that started with A because my last name is W and that's fine, but the world often does get divided in alphabetical order. My husband's last name is Ackerman. I didn't want to take his name because I was a writer and I already had some bylines. But if somebody had said, yeah, but his name starts with an A, I might have taken it because um, when books get shelved, sometimes, you know, it's alphabetical. So I sort of got it in my head. I want to start a book that starts with A. And again, I'm being very honest with you. I wanted to, I wanted to pick a, uh, are there any Avas in the room? No? What? You're Ava? Oh, wonderful. Your middle name's Ava? Awesome. Um, I also wanted to pick a, 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 a girl's name that would be common enough that some people might walk by and say, oh, well, maybe I'll get this for my daughter or my granddaughter or my cousin. So, um, so I had practical reasons as well as lovely literary reasons, but I like the name and it is, you know, those are probably the two real reasons. I like that name. Good middle name. Yes. Why did you choose to write in Ava's point of view? Why did I choose to write in Ava's point of view? Um, in other words, this could have been, once upon a time there were two sisters. One of them felt a little bit neglected by her parents. That would be like a regular novel, third person. I chose to, to write first person. You won't believe what I just found out. For me, I really like first person. Even girl talk is first person. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to figure out what the first sentence you know, The first sentence of the introduction talk, which I called hello instead of introduction, is I'm impressed with you already. I don't always read introductions. I'm glad you picked up Girl Talk. I always want to be like, it's you and me in a room, you know? Um, and so, so I chose first person, the I, instead of third person, because I knew that I could get uh, deep into the head of the character. And the deeper I get into her head, the, the, I felt that, that, would, that would be, you would be able to identify with that more. And frankly, it's easier for me because I kept diaries. So for me, it's easier to keep on writing diaries, even if they're all polished and public. Yes? What was the predicament around the way writing that book? Wait, what was the predicament? What was the predicament around writing this book? Um, so you mean for me as a writer, or you mean the plot, the plot problems, or the writer problems? Like, I mean, like, when you're writing this book, like, you're, like, you're, like, getting distracted from writing the yeah, what were there? So, so for me as a writer writing the book, was it hard to write a book in some ways, you're asking, right? Um, there's always distractions. I have two daughters. How lucky am I that I have two daughters? They're older than you guys now. And I have a cat, I have a husband. They're so distracting. <laughs> Got a refrigerator. I mean, you know. <laughs> um, you, so there's always distractions. And sometimes I literally go to a library with just my manuscript. Like instead of with my computer, because computers are big distractions, and sure it's fun, but it's so nice to read a book, you know, or to write in a diary instead of just seeing what your friend said in the last 12 seconds. In the big picture, it's a little more nourishing and gratifying and feels better when you've read a book instead of, you know, been online all afternoon. So, so when I have distractions, I will take my, my copy, I will go to a quiet room in my house, maybe I'll go into my kid's room if she's not there she, when she was at school, or go to the library, and I'll just take my pen and my paper and I'll work on it. And that way, if I'm not in my own house, it's less distracting. Um, but you have to also just understand that it's never going to be, I have a whole month with nothing to do, I think I'll write a novel. You know, you're always going to have things on the calendars, things you want to do, things you have to do. So if it's a priority for you to, to and then so like fill in the blank, you know, to reach your dream, whether it's writing or making music or practicing music or singing or science or math or whatever it is, you, you make it a priority. And remember, sure, maybe this particular minute I don't feel like working, but I'm going to feel so good if I put in a couple hours of work. Um, yes. How long did it take me to write this book? Well, you know, it didn't take me that long to write the book, but then to rewrite it and revise it and make it better and do the zillionth draft. That took a lot longer. And then to get it published took a long time. So I hate to give you the bad news, but just say you want to be a writer. For me, it was like this big dream. I kept being an advice columnist, and finally I was pushing 40, and I said, Carol, this is ridiculous. You keep writing for girls and you and you love that 
but you keep wanting to write fiction like you studied in college. Why don't you give yourself advice, some advice, and, and get to it? So I tried really hard to write uh, The Diary of Melanie Martin, and I've got, wait, wait, I'm going to find it. I said yeah, I got an agent, which wasn't easy, and the agent sent it to a lot of publishers. And the publishers didn't say, hooray, Carol reached her dream. The publishers, at first, said, dear Laura, that's the name of my agent then, as we discussed, enclosed is Carol Weston's The Diary of Melanie Martin, which is not right for our list. I liked the author, but thought the title was a little too special for our market. Thanks for giving us a chance to see it. In other words, three lines, for my, for my dream that I put out there. So, first of all, how many of you think it's good to be special? It's good to be special. It's good to be special. She didn't even give me anything helpful like there's too much dialogue or there's not enough dialogue or whatever. Sometimes it's discouraging, but um, I didn't just roll over and play dead, you know? I mean, I probably did cry, I probably did, but I didn't just give up. And I also didn't just keep sending it out and sending it out. I looked at it and I said, how can I make this better? And I gave it to the school librarian, I gave it to my teacher's, uh, my kid's teacher, I gave it to a friend of mine who's a writer, I'm like, how can I make this better? And they gave me thoughts and I made another draft. And then finally, that book came out and it was called The Diary of Melanie Martin and it came out with Knopf, which is this really prestigious publisher. So I was sort of amazed that it got rejected, rejected, and came out with this great publisher. So the lesson there is, number one, don't give up. But number two, there may come a time in six years, I hope you'll all be applying to college. I, I really do hope every one of you will be applying to college. And I bet you'll be applying to really great colleges. And a lot of you will get in, yay! And a few of you won't get into the college. <coughs> you really want to get into, but you'll get into this other amazing college, which might even be a better fit for you, or, or high school, you know, or you might apply to a boarding school or something. But the point is, or you might like a guy and he doesn't like you back, but then this other guy likes you back and he's even better for you. So don't get too discouraged. And if you put yourself out on the limb, if you're in a job where you're taking risks, there will be, you know, you're going to get some no's. A few doors, they're going to go, no, thank you. And you're like, seriously? But you just got to keep knocking on doors and keep yourself all polished and your stuff good. Work hard. Don't just want the door to be open. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, was it hard to develop this, um, the novel? Was it hard to develop the novel? For me, it was. It's not, it's, I like writing, but sometimes I have to work really hard on making things hard for Ava. Remember I was saying I want to solve the problems if you write me with a Dear Carol kind of problem. But if Ava's got a problem, I can't make it too easy for her. And I have to make it hard for her. I have to make you worry about her. I have to make you sad for her. And so I just have to keep pushing the character. So yeah, the honest answer is, yep, it was hard. And then I wrote Ava and Taco Cat, which was a little easier, but I'm not done yet. And now, assuming Ava Wren gets to be you know, a book series, I'll have to write a third one. Well, like, I don't have a plot yet. You know, that's, I'm working. Always in the back of my mind, a teeny tiny wheel is turning, trying to come up with a plot, but it's hard. I don't just sit down and have ten plots. Yes? What was your nice and loud. What was your purpose for writing Ava? What was the purpose? Um, well, I would say just the way um, uh, Roald Dahl's The Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was my kind of gateway book. You know, people talk about gateway drugs. By the way, please don't do drugs. I mean, hello? You're, you're like in this great school, in this great city. You're going you know, to waste your life on drugs. Don't do it. But some people talk about a gateway drug, like you take one drug and then you're going to take other drugs. Don't take any drugs. But I think gateway books can be a good thing, too. You read one book and suddenly go, you know, this was kind of fun to read. Maybe I don't hate reading. Maybe reading is fun. Maybe I won't just be online all day. So I want to do, if you say what's the purpose, for me, the purpose when I write a book is to get a kid to laugh, to think, to like reading more than she liked it before, and maybe to learn not to be so shy, or not to be mean, or to be patient, or to talk directly to your parents um, about things that bother you. And to have fun, because I want to have fun too when I'm writing. Um, uh, yes, with the tiara. <laughs> yep. Was there ever a time I wanted to quit? Uh, yes. It's not so much that I wanted to quit, but there have been times when I've been in a room where all the doors are closed. I'm like, seriously, people? I, 
write good books and then the good books do well and they get translated. You're not going to publish my book in English. If you don't publish it in English, I'm not going to get it translated into Chinese. I'm not going to get to talk to, to you guys at the Center for Fiction. I mean, let me in the door. So it's not so much that I want to quit, but there have definitely been times when, when I've been like, you know, please let me in the door. <laughs> um, yes. Well, that's really funny that you should ask why I only decide to write books for girls because the kids I talked to at Bank Street were, you know, half girls, half boys. So, entre nous, which is French for between us, among us, you know, it's true. Girls like my work and respond to my work more, and I do kind of write for girls. But I like to say that just as girls read Harry Potter, Boys can read Avon Pip. And while I don't expect a teenage boy to read Avon Pip, if there's a nine-year-old boy, if you have a little brother and you own this book and your little brother wants to read it, don't please, please don't say it's for girls. Please say, oh, I think you'll like it. Because I also tell boys, I'm kind of giving you a sneak peek into the diary of a girl. You're welcome, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who inspired me? Um, I'm not sure there was one person who inspired me to become an author. You gotta think about that for a second. Because I was thinking, who's the first sort of real live author I met? And I'm, I'm not sure what the answer is. I know that living in New York City, as you do, there are so many authors who speak for free at Barnes & Noble, for instance. Um, like if you went to Barnes & Noble website and you said, and you pressed on events, it would say this month we have all these famous authors speaking and some not so famous authors speaking. But I, I love hearing authors speak, but I'm trying to think who, who inspired me. I think in my particular case, I really was just sort of a natural writer. I mean, here I was writing in my diary about writing, you know? So it was more like I really want to, I want to write a book. I want to write a book. And that's how I felt when I got out of college. Um, but yeah, the glasses. Well, yeah, the glasses. Um, how old were you when you published your first book? How old was I when I published my first book? I think I was 28 years old, which is pretty young. I mean, it may seem old to you, but looking back, I realize I, I got lucky pretty early. Um, way in the back, also with glasses, yes, and the headband. Um, is there a message to this story? Is there a message to the story? By the way, you guys are writing great questions, and I know you prepared ahead, but I really appreciate your having prepared them ahead, because they are great messages. Yes, just the way Aesop fables have um, morals at the end, you know, honesty is the best policy, or don't count your chickens before they're hatched. This book kind of has a message, and because Ava likes Aesop's fables, she, she says that it's, that it's helping others helps you too, which I think is true. And she helps Pip, um, but she becomes, she helps Pip, I'm not spoiling anything really here, she helps Pip find her voice. And in doing so, she kind of finds her own voice. Pip was shy, needs to get out there. But, so that's literal. But Ava needs to find her own voice figuratively because instead of sitting around feeling, my mom's not paying attention to me, she needed to talk to her mom. Okay, wait, now I'm going to be the Dear Abby again. If you need to talk to your mom or dad, instead of saying, Mom, Dad, you don't pay any attention to me. It's crying. They're going to say, you little brat. I do too. I hope they won't say that. But they might give you a hug. They might bust. But they're not going to, it's not going to work. You're now in sixth grade. So the more you act like an adult at home, the more they will treat you like an adult. And so if you say, you never give me any privacy, you know, you're acting like a kid. If you say, I, I, I need a little bit of privacy now that I've, now that I'm in adolescence, they'll go, whoa, and they might give you a little bit of privacy. So if you need something from your parents, just think about how you're asking for it, and then I hope it'll help. Yes? What sustained you while writing this book? What sustained me while writing this book? Whoa, that's a good question. Back when I was in that room and all the doors were seeming closed. I mean, I, I will say I'm very lucky that I'm happily married to my husband and that I have these two great kids. And life itself is lovely even when your career is hitting a bump. So, you know, you invite your friends over and you have some pizza. And I, I actually like art museum. I mean, in other words, friendship and love. That's pretty key. So work to make friends. Some of the people you're friends with right now are going to be your friends when you're my age. I swear it. You'll probably come back for a reunion or you'll call each other and you'll remember all the things and you'll remember your teachers and it's so fun. But um, for me, 
I like great art. That's why I made Melanie's mom an art teacher. So for instance, if you go into the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which is 83rd and 5th Avenue, it says suggested donation. Well, you can say, I'm going to make money, and I'm a kid, and walk right in. Or you can give them a quarter or a buck if you want. But it's suggested. You do not have to have money. You can just walk in. And then, for me, what was sustaining, what is sustaining, is if I walk in those halls, and there's a self-portrait of Rembrandt, and I know he had bumps, too. I mean, he lost, you know, some of his kids died, and he was Rembrandt, Rembrandt. We're talking Rembrandt. For a while there, nobody liked his stuff. You know, Van Gogh didn't sell any paintings. I mean, you know, and you walk through and you see this beautiful art, and a book takes a little while to read. I hope you enjoy those hours, but you look at a beautiful piece of art, it takes two minutes to see what somebody spent a long time up to with all their talent. So I happen to love art museums. I also like taking walks with friends, but you know, it's good to have your, your network of friends and people who love you. Um, way in the back with, yeah. Nice and loud though. Um, I'm so glad you asked that because Victoria did con <coughs> do the cover and in this case they pretty much said this is the cover and they said I had told them I hope you like my book Ava Wren and her magic pen and they said yes we do but we don't really like the title do you mind if we change it to Ava and Pip I was kind of surprised and taken aback but then I thought I like Ava and Pip and I like that they're palin the palindromes like if you say to a friend of yours who's not in this class or to your mom or whatever Here's this book, and look, it's palindromes. It's possible that even adults might say palin, what? And you'll have to explain, look, it's the same word backward and forward. So I kind of like that that was right on the cover. Um, wait, I'm going to reach over for a different cover. With my Melanie Martin books, they sent this over to me. They look all kind of like big-headed kid. <laughs> and um, they sent them over to me, and I sometimes said, I like this, but could we change that? And in this case, I also said, OK, this is the very early cover. I know this isn't in bookstores or libraries yet, but I'm kind of worried because this book is set in Italy. My, my Melanie Martin books are set in Italy, Holland, Spain, and the New York City. Something's wrong here if this book is set in Italy. I don't, I think there's a mistake. Do any of you kids, can any of you kids find what I was worried about? And I'll give you a hint. Uh, actually, that says Canop, so that's a good, that's okay, because that's, uh, no, the, no, it's not the corner. Anything? I don't know. Yeah? Uh, no, it's not the curse of writing. I'll give you a hint. It's the flag. Is there something wrong with the flag if this is a book set in Italy? It's, it's not the right one. This is not the flag of Italy. This happens to be the flag. Feel free to shout it out if you happen to know. Mexico. This is the Mexican flag. So even, you know, Knopf, this great cover, this great publisher, almost, they had a mistake in their cover. Not, they caught it. But, you know, we all make mistakes. And then the point is to catch them and fix them. And, you know, fix them before you turn it in. But, so the, so the short answer is yes. They, let, they show me the cover, and if I said, I hate this cover, or actually in the case of Ava and Pip, I said, look, I want this, kid, this book to be for sixth graders. Please give Pip some earrings. And they did, because I felt like Pip. Right now you're looking at earrings. But I felt like Pip and, and Ava looked too much like twins. I wanted Pip to look a little older. So I get, I get some say. Um, more questions? Yes. Uh, has writing novels changed? <coughs> wow, these are such profound questions. Has writing novels changed who I am? <laughs> when I take the subway home, I'm going to have to think about that one. I mean, it's funny, you know, being Dear Carol for girl, Girls Like Magazine definitely has made me a person a little more confident because I had time to really think about friendship and, you know, all these issues. Um, and I tend to give advice to my friends, and sometimes they're like, I didn't ask you, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I give advice all the time. <laughs> you know I mean it in the nicest way. Um, with the novels, has it changed who I am? I think I'm lucky that because if you're writing a novel, you're trying to get into your heart and, you know, write, write about feelings and not just events. I think it's allowed me to slow down and, and think about people carefully and mindfully. <laughs> Yes. After 
Oh, uh, have I developed as an author? I think I'm a better writer now than I was um, with the first book. I think Girl Talk, because I was trying to, as I said, you know, speak to sixth graders about everything, you know, everything, put it all in the book. Um, it's all there, but it wasn't fiction. So once I started writing fiction, then yeah, I still take classes sometimes. I give classes. It's crazy. I teach, but I still sometimes take a class because I always have more to learn. Um, who, do, raise your hand if you have an answer, or ask a question. Yeah, you. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to say one thing that I'm... Nice and loud, please. I just want to say one thing that thank you for showing us some palindromes in the back of this book. And a question about, in the front, you said in memory of Christopher Joseph Todd. Wow, these are, um, so thank you for thanking me for the palindromes in the back of the book. My, my daughter just got engaged and her fiance was the one who said, Put a, put a list at the end of the book, because for the kids who don't like to read, at least they'll be able to see um, uh, you know, all these palindromes. Christopher Todd, uh, thank you for asking. It's, it's a sad story. He was a cousin. He died last year. And what, that's always sad, but what makes it extra sad is he, he we were kind of with him that day. So I'm going to tell you the story because it's sort of a cautionary tale too. But we were uh, in a place in New Hampshire. We were hiking up a mountain, which is supposed to be a really fun thing to do. He probably wasn't, he was 30, which is young, trust me. But he wasn't probably quite as in good shape as he remembered having been. And it was a really hot day, like 90 something degrees or 85 degrees. And we didn't know that we should have had so much water with us, but we didn't know that. It was a long hike, like eight, eight miles. And there were a lot of kids in high school, well, there were only 10 of us. I mean, this is a terribly sad story. We were 10 of us who went up, 10 cousins and nine of us who came back. And, um, and it was just a, a terrible that the weather was so hot that we didn't have enough water that he probably wasn't as in good shape as he thought, that he was very heavy and probably didn't realize that being very heavy compromises your health. It's not just that it. everybody says, oh, you'll look better if you're slim. It's that if you're very heavy, your heart has to work harder. But anyway, he was a, he was a beautiful man who loved books, loved talking about books. I was talking with him about Ava and about books and about books he loved <coughs> on the way up the mountain. We got to the top of the mountain. I'm a person who takes photos. I took photos. I was a little worried about him because he was breathing. I was a little worried about him when he came and said, I'm going to take this hike too because he was a big guy. But I didn't feel it was my place to say, you know, you shouldn't because he was a grown up. If he was your age, I might have said you shouldn't. Anyway, he, he, we all hiked and we were all having fun and, and uh, he didn't, he, he sort of collapsed in the middle of the mountain. And this is in July, where my whole family's, my whole greater family's still pretty shaken up about this. And they were very happy that I did the dedication. But, um, you know, stay fit, everybody. It's not just, it's not just for appearance. And you're not supposed to look at the people, you're not supposed to look like the people on the magazines, because that's all, you know, kind of nonsense. No one has to look like that. But you want to be able to, you know, run up two flights of stairs and stuff like that. You want to be able to hike a mountain. And also bring water, you know, bring, be, be, be smarter than, be so, be so smart, because there are, it's like, you know, it's like the people who get killed by taxis, you know, zooming, or, you know, put on your seatbelts, walk, look both ways, all that stuff, because suddenly it's just so tragic when there's a sad thing. Thank you for asking. Um, somebody who didn't ask a question, <coughs> did you know when, did you ask? Go ahead. Um, so the diary format is more comfortable for me, really. I thought it'd be fun for you. Sometimes in the book it'll say, I'm writing this, I'm so glad I'm writing in my diary because I'd be so embarrassed if anybody saw this. And of course I'm very aware that I hope lots of people will see it. Will see. So it's sort of like the author winking at the reader, you know. But in general for me, I've tried novels and I hope I will write a, a novel, a third person novel someday. But for me, this is my fifth published diary novel. Because the di if you like these books, um, the, di the Diary of Melanie Martin is in paperback and it's an e-book and maybe your librarian can get it. Um, so, just more fun for me. Yes. Yes. Oh, 41 to 43. Um, is that when she gets writer's block? I hope it's not a, a misprint or something. Oh no, they're almost empty. Those pages are there like, well, she's, she goes to, she's, 
enters a contest, because she's a good little speller and good little writer, so her librarian, yay librarians, I think it's school library day too, school librarian day, <laughs> um, her librarian says you should enter a contest. So she, suddenly she gets like a little case of writer's block. She, who can write and write and write, when it's for a contest, she's like, I don't know what to write. So these pages, I still don't know what to write. I still don't know what to write. But I also did it that way because I thought for you, the reader, it's kind of fun if you've just had a really, really long chapter, and then the next chapter is, is you know, one line, six words. Yes? Did I get writer's block like Ava? Well, that is an excellent question. My kid, when my kids were kind of your age, and people would ask me, do I ever get writer's block? I would say, my writer's block is from 9 a.m. to 2.45, because that's when my house is quiet, no distractions, and if I don't get my work done, I'm, you know, it's silly. So that's my writer's block. Then when my kids uh, went to college, all of a sudden, my house was pretty quiet, or pretty, you know, a little noisy, but, but my, I didn't have that same structure, so it was hard for me to stay writing. Um, I, think, I think the times when I felt a little bit blocked have been, as I've described, like being in a room where the doors just won't open, even when you're knocking nicely and all nicely dressed and wrote a good resume and all that, and it's hard not to get discouraged. It's a lot easier to write. For instance, when this book, and a lot of people said no to this book too, publishers, and then this publisher called Sourcebook Jabberwocky Kids said, we love this book, oh my gosh, we want to give you a two book deal. It was my first two book deal. I'm like, really? You're buying this book and a book I haven't even written yet? That's so cool. And they're like, no, this is so cool. And sometimes you just have to find the right door. But um, so it was not that hard to write the second book because I knew that there was this whole team of editors and publicists and agents. I got a new agent. People who were so excited about it. Um, I guess I would also say find the people who like your work. Just say you write an essay. And just say you you say, Granddad, I wrote an essay. Just say your grandfather's a little bit gruff, and I hope you have wonderful, kind grandfathers, but just say your particular grandfather or father or uncle or whoever it is is a little bit gruff. Well, don't give that person the essay of my heart was broken when, because they might say, oh, honey, you know, in other words, you have to choose. Everybody has people in their life who, like, love them unconditionally. Or if they don't have them, they're going to find those people. Um, and other people who are, don't really get you, you know? So, so the people who, who love you, they're the people who you want to listen to when you're feeling discouraged. Um, yes? Does Ava and Pip remind me of any of my two kids? I will say that Melanie Martin reminded me of my daughter Elizabeth, and Matt the brat, her little uh, brother, reminded me a little bit of Emmy, my other daughter, who wasn't a brat, but who could kind of get away with, you know, adorable slash bratty behavior because, or behavior that would make her big sister roll her eyes, because. Uh, because she just could. And also, Matt the Brat reminded me of my nephew, who, when he was little, he would like see a box of chocolates and, you know, put his finger in to see what was inside. Or, you know, that little puffy paper that's like little bubbles? Yeah. You know, bubble wrap? I mean, I remember once Emmy was in my room. Sorry, Emmy was in her room, and I was, you know, in the kitchen or something, and I heard, like, it sounded like gun, gun, gunshots. It was like, bang, 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 bang. I'm like, what's going on? I mean, it was little gunshots, it wasn't scary, but it was weird. So I go running in, and she's like just jumping on, jumping on, you know, bubble wrap. And then I thought that was funny, so I put that in the book. Or once Emmy, Lizzie got a, de Emmy got a detention, and because I'm, you know, a mom, but also a writer, Lizzie came home, sorry, Emmy came home and said, I got a detention, mom, in fifth grade. And I was like, oh, Emmy. What did you do? But then I like get my pen out, my notebook. <laughs> what did you do? Because I'm pretty sure it's going to be a funny story, which it kind of was, and I gave that to Melanie. So Abe and Pip, I tell me about Abe and Pip, my own kids were a little bit older, so I couldn't just sort of, you know, follow them with a pencil as much. But I, um, but I, so a lot of it's, yeah, a lot of it's more my own childhood, but with some stuff from them too, for sure. Um, wait, yes, yes, yep. What's my favorite thing about creating a novel? Being the novel? No, creating a novel. Creating a novel? What is my favorite thing about creating a novel? Hmm. Well, you know, sometimes people say, oh, the blank page, it's so scary. But the blank page is pretty awesome, too, because if you're creating a novel, I mean, I've really, like, I think I've written characters where, where they had two grandparents, and then you're like, you know, 
she just has one grandparent. <laughs> you just sort of cross it out. I mean, it's sort of you, you are the god of the own your own universe. Or you have a parent who's, you know, or a friend who's in a wheelchair, and then you go, you know, I don't know why I was doing that. I think I was trying to be politically correct in a novel, but I'm not really going to write well about that character. So suddenly you go, you know what? This kid can walk just fine. In other words, I like that you can give the kid a cat or take the cat away. I like that I'm, I'm inventing it, even though sometimes it is hard to invent. And I also like that um, because I'm the advice columnist and have messages I want to impart, I like that if I write a good, if I do a good job, I can, if I say to you, helping others helps yourself, you're like, oh, that's nice, helping others helps you too. But if you really read the whole book and kind of get it, then maybe you'll go and do a good deed that you wouldn't have otherwise done that day, and, and that's kind of nice too. A um, couple more questions, yes. In the future, do I plan to write books for boys? I think I probably won't ever write a book just for boys because I do, I did write Girl Talk, I do have daughters, and even though I have two big brothers, I'm kind of, I kind of do live in girl world. As I said, I don't always want all the co-ed schools to, to hear me say that because I like speaking in schools with boys in them. But I went to a co-ed school, co schools always. Um, so maybe one more question and then we'll have time to sign books. Is that right? Okay, um, who didn't ask a question? You, who didn't ask a question? Yes. Who's my favorite character, Naven Pip? You know, I just the way you can't really say to a mom, who's your favorite kid, because you I love all my kids. But I, I really like Ava especially, and B, who I won't, for those of you who haven't read it yet, I won't tell you that much about B, because right now we think she's so terrible, that B. But, you know, B, B, B's more complicated than that. And because B actually wants to grow up and be an advice columnist, I, I have a soft spot for B, too. So I have a soft spot for all you guys. This was so nice. You asked the best questions ever. I'm so impressed. And I want to sign your books.